Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. My name is Louis Mendes. Hope you guys are all well on your Sunday morning. On this week's show, we'll be looking back to win a very uh, entertaining game yesterday uh, against Barnsley at the Valley Addicts, running out 2-1 winners that takes us on to that magic 50-point mark. That means we are almost certainly 100% safe now. So wonderful news uh, at the Valley uh, yesterday. Joining me to look back at that game, first up top right, it's Nathan Muller. How are you doing, Bad, mate. Well, that was a bit bad, wasn't it? The Monday, yeah. but uh, yeah, good to be here, mate. Nice to see your lovely faces and Benji's. Yeah, oh, that's a bit harsh on Ben, implying he doesn't also have a lovely face. But yeah, it's um, uh, it's uh, it, yeah, it was it was like the complete opposite of the game on Easter Monday, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, also to talk through that match with us down the bottom of the screen there is Ben Clay. How you doing, Ben? I'm good, mate. Yeah, I missed that one on Monday because I was away in Devon for the week, so uh, I think it was me coming back inspired the. Uh, uh, exciting match that we had. So that was good yeah. fun, wasn't it? It's a shame your attendance over the last few years hasn't inspired more than really. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take that. We'll take we'll take yesterday at least. So we'll, we'll hear the goals uh, from yesterday's game uh, shortly. We will, of course, hear from uh, the Addicts boss, uh, Nathan Jones, who had his say uh, on the performance. I also asked him a cheeky little question about Lloyd Jones's uh, burgeoning TV career as well, which we'll hear the answer to on that. Uh, as well, we're going to hear from Karoy Anderson. Spoke to him after yesterday's game back in the side, uh, back with another good performance yesterday. So we'll, we'll hear from Karoy uh, later on. We've also got a very special guest as well uh, in the guest slot this week. Ali Maxwell from the Not The Top 20 pod uh, is going to uh, join us to give us his thoughts on yesterday's game. He was there, wasn't he, of course, for, for Charlton TV. And he's an expert on all things uh, EFL. So we're going to hear from Ali uh, later on in the show. I want to hear from you guys as well. Morning to everyone uh, in the chat. All hell let loose was in there first saying good morning, Sonny. Sunday morning uh, for everyone. It certainly is. Robbie's in there. Nick, Dan, uh, Sam, Paul, Anthony, Jay, Lawrence. There's loads of you in there. 76, Rufus. And John says, morning all. We won. We certainly did, John. So, yeah, let us know what you made on uh, yesterday's uh, performance. Um, any Anyone that stood out for you, presumably Alfie May will be up there with these two fantastic finishes. Uh, they've got us all three uh, points. Let us know what you made of it. Uh, let us know what your hopes are now for the rest of the season. Um, obviously, with, with safety effectively now secured, what, what do you want to see happen between now uh, and the end of the campaign. So before we hear the goals from Charlton TV, Naif, um, just give us your, your overall thoughts on, on yesterday's game. Yeah, I thought it was, it was a good game to watch, actually. <clears throat> um, throughout, I thought it was a really, really good game. Um, I know the benchmark was set low on Monday, but I really enjoyed yesterday. I uh, thought we played good in some bits. I thought Barnsley played some good bits. Barnsley had their chances. We had our chances. It would work. Uh, probably, uh, Probably one of... Alfie's best games for us, I think, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a, it was a good game to watch, and as we said on Thursday, and I said after the game, you know, they they were a good team, and um, you know, they only lost one away all season, so shows that we sort of we can compete at that level with just our cons- inconsistencies this year and giving away silly goals um, has been our sort of Achilles heel a little bit. But no, we gave away some chances. They should have scored a couple for sure. Uh, apparently their goal was onside according to Neil Collins, but I haven't really looked at it back, to be honest. But yeah, good day overall, mate. Yeah, it certainly was. Well, let's have a listen back to the goals then uh, from Charlton TV. Your commentators, as always, were Greg Stubbley and Terry Smith. Gillespie are the two Charlton players over this ball. Barnsley again with everybody bar. McAtee behind uh, the line. That's drawn by the referee. Really tall wall. Whistle's blown. It is Alfie May. Takes it into the right hand, right side of the keeper who didn't move, Roberts. The left side of the goal as we look. Superb free kick from Charlton's top scorer. And Charlton have the lead here at the Valley. Well, I spoke about the height of the wall tell. And I suspect that the goalkeeper just thinks that May is going to try and beat it. But instead, it's intelligent from Alfie May. He thinks I'm just going to hit the target, put some power behind it. And the goalkeeper's completely wrong Your footed. Barnsley have it on the left hand side. Back inside is Phillips. Edge of the box to L. Looks for the 1 2. Phillips again hits Ramsey's hand. That oh, might no, be a penalty. No, no. And the penalty's given. How could he get out of the way of that, though? I mean, Ramsey's arm was out, no question about that. But surely there's nothing. It took a deflection off the floor. It can't be a penalty, really. I don't know. Maybe the rules now are because his arm was away from his body, unnatural position and all that, but what could he do? Steps back. Be a short run-up. 
in front of the covered end. Referee blows his whistle. Phillips steps up and scores. It's a wonderful penalty to Arsted's right in the left-hand corner. Hit it with power. Arsted went the right way, but that power was enough. And Barsley have the equaliser after 27 and a half minutes. Yeah, you feel for Arsted. He did guess the right way, but the corner was right. Uh, the penalty rather was right in that corner. By Phillips comes down to Gillespie. Ball forward towards Dobson. Let's the ball run to Alfie May. You can turn in the penalty here. May on his right foot. Goal! Oh, for a goal! Oh, that is brilliant! Oh! That is why he's League One's top goal scorer. That is why he's Charlton's number nine. And Charlton make it to Alfie May at the double. That is exceptional from Alfie May, but also give credit to Dobson for that little dummy. He tried it earlier on in the half and it didn't come off. This time it worked perfectly. Dobson just let the ball run to Alfie May's feet. Took it on his right foot, created the space himself and curled it beyond Roberts. What a finish and what a way to put Charlton back in the lead. His way beyond the cart. The cart will just get there first. It's an awkward ball back to his keeper. He takes the touch. Campbell still down. Is that a penalty? Yes, it is. Campbell got there first. Roberts in all sorts of trouble. Tried to beat him to it. And all he did was end up bringing down the Charlton winger. And the Addicts have a penalty. Brilliant from Tyrese Campbell. That's what you want as a substitute with fresh legs. It's all about him. It is an eco. Steps forward. Drills it and it's saved to the left-hand side by Roberts. And the Addicts don't put the game to bed, but we have a corner. That's a brilliant save from Roberts. Makes some ends. There we go. That's the highlights uh, from uh, yesterday's 2-1 win against Bars. The ends on a slightly sour note with, with the missed penalty by Chooks and EK Ben. But, I mean... Throughout that game, especially in the in, in, in the second half, when, when, when you, you sort of looked back at the chances that happened throughout the game, I thought what we saw yesterday was the difference between two strikers who have scored a lot of goals this season, but one of whom's in a, a rich vein of form and one of whom isn't. So Devante Cole should have had two yesterday comfortably. Alfie May probably should have had zero yesterday because neither of those chances that he scored were clear-cut chances, but he, he just made them look absolutely easy. And that's why he's been such a revelation for us this season. Yeah, we said it a lot this season, haven't we? Where would we be without him? And uh, he was everywhere yesterday, wasn't he? On corners, free kicks. I just wish he was on penalties at the end. Um, and he was still on the pitch there. But yeah, he's just, I mean, his energy around the pitch, wanting the ball all the time. I mean, we've spoken about Ladapo on here and how it hasn't worked for him. I mean, just different players, aren't they? Whereas you, we've lacked the service to the strikers lately because of Corey leaving. And uh, he just creates his own chances. We've said that over recent weeks, how him and uh, Kanu have kind of created their own stuff up there just by harrying the defenders and uh, working out quick one-twos between himself. And uh, yesterday, yeah, it was nice to see that um, we scored that first goal from a defender showing some initiative rather than booting the ball up, which we've seen over recent weeks. Gillespie actually brings the ball forward and draws people out of position and Dobbo with a cheeky dummy. And uh, and he's able to... Uh, you knew what he was going to do. Sorry, I'm talking about second goal, aren't I? Yeah, first goal is free kick. But you knew what he was going to do with that second goal and he still did it. And the keeper had no chance, did he? It was such a good finish. Uh, and yeah, you just buzz off him every time he's got the ball because he's just so infectious, isn't he? Just the, his willing, his 100% running and willingness to want the ball and create for others. He's just such a great player to have in the side. And as you said, yeah, Cole had that chance where it uh, whistled right across the face of the goal and you think, oh no, here we go. And he sliced it over the bar. And yeah, I think, We've been struggling for service towards Alfie. He got the service for the second goal. First goal, I can't remember the last time we scored a direct free kick like that. So, yeah, he's got it all, hasn't he? He's got it all in his locker and he's willing to do it all for the team. Just such a special player to have and made that game so much more exciting yesterday because, as you said, he made he made both goals, really, didn't he? I mean, he got a good ball through for that goal, but he had to do a lot after it. So, yeah, special player. And um, let's hope he can continue a few more goals and get that golden boot. Yeah, it's just, just he's not really got two himself yesterday. And then Colby Bishop, who's who's next in line, also got two yesterday as well. So he's still, he's still only got a, a gap of three 
um, Alfie for, for the golden boot. But he is in the lead at, at this stage of the season, which is a great place uh, to be. Anthony says, morning all. Very happy Irish Addict. It was a, it was a great game. It really was a very entertaining game. Uh, yesterday, Nathan. Uh, you, you know, we know Barnes. You're a good side. We know. I mean, their away record this season is remarkable. So they've already won twelve on the road uh, before yesterday, which equals a club record. So I think they've still got a chance, obviously, to to go go and uh, beat that club record this season. But it wasn't to be yesterday. That was only their second defeat away from home this season. The last one was away at Derby in November. So we knew we were going to be in for a game. And I actually thought in in the first half, you could probably argue certainly the first goal came came against the run of play. I think they were having their their chances so there, there was still that that slightly concerning element of I thought defensively particularly in the first half or, or probably only in the first half we looked a little bit like there was a lack of communication at the back a couple of times I still came off the line and, and it seemed a bit it seemed to be you know, misjudged perhaps and there was a lack of trust between between the defensive units so what I did find encouraging was that we did seem to sort that out in the second half because we know it's been a problem this season yeah it has I think the second half it become a little bit more stretched, which I think suited us a lot more. Um, obviously, Barnsley were just trying to go for it a little bit and left us with a little bit of space. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there, there's some encouraging signs that we can compete with, obviously, the teams up there, um, which I think in certain games this year, we've known that. Um, but again, we've just been too inconsistent defensively and stuff. And what, Barnsley won 12 away from home. What's that? What have we won? Two or three? How many have we won away from home now? Not very many, but Free, Look at them. Free. Yeah, three. So you know, nine more wins than us. It shows why we are where we are. And um, but yeah, some encouraging signs yesterday. I was still obviously kept the same midfield free. I thought it would have been nice to change it up. Um obviously Core Anderson was more or less buzzing around that Jonathan Russell all all game, really, all the first half. So it was sort of I was looking at it going, well, where are we gonna get our chances from? And and as you say, the goal come from the run of play, but you'd take it. Um, and obviously Barnsley then had to take the initiative to us, which has left us with a little bit of space. So, yeah, you know, a much improved second half, mate. Yeah, I mean, also we, got, we we had the lead then with that Alfie May free kick, which we've already spoken about, Ben. Um, they, they got back into it with the penalty. Um, Terry Terry didn't think it was a penalty. He said it took a deflection off the floor on, on its way through to, to Kane Ramsey. But I mean, I've watched it back from angles and his arm is out. I mean, it is close range, but when your arm's out, it's a penalty all day long, isn't it? Yeah, uh, straight away, you just, from my position, I was just a bit behind you and you could just see like the ball have a, like a massive shake, if you like, as it got crossed in and you thought, wow, oh, that's quite a thick edge of his arm, isn't it? And uh, yeah, it's always annoying because you think, well, it's one of them where it's not uh, stopping a goal scoring opportunity, but it's taken a... And you're right near the player. I know what tail means there. You're, you're quite near the player. It's quite hard to get your arm by your sides and out of the way. But when you've got it out like that, it is a penalty, isn't it? We see him given. Um, and yeah, didn't he take that penalty well? Drilled right into the corner of the goal. I said, unfortunately for him, dived the right way, but just couldn't get there. And uh, yeah, not sure why he just started shushing the crowd. He didn't really help himself there, did he? Um yeah, shame because I think overall when that goal went in, I thought we were on top and and deserved the lead. Um, so I thought it was a shame going in like towards the second, uh, towards the first end of the first half. Thinking, oh, that's a shame. And uh, yeah, and obviously after that, Alfie did his magic to to give us a lead back. But um, yeah, I mean, I was just scrolling through there. They've scored twelve goals in their last four away games coming into this game. So they score a lot of goals, and uh, we've restricted them. To, for them just to score a penalty yesterday. So as much as I think we criticise the defence, and I can't sit here today and go, oh, yeah, I think like, I think Thomas did play well. It was a bit of a standout for me thinking about it and and that. I can't sit here and go, oh, yeah, I really thought the defence played really well, but they must be doing something right to have um, to have kept restricted them yesterday to just scoring that penalty. So, um, yeah, that's credit to them. Um, and definitely a positive we can take because when we had that uh, Tracy on from the Barnsley pod on Thursday, she just said how they just attack, attack, attack and their def their defence isn't very good. So, um, yeah, definitely a positive we can take from yesterday. Mm, yeah, I mean, but they did have their chances. I'm just going through the, the list now. So, you know, McAtee with that, that lob when Iceton came out of goal quite early on. Um, that one that Devante Cole put wide, which I, I've written down under pressure from Hector, but I think you could argue, I mean, all hell let loose says, was that a pen in the first half when Heck got back to, to put off their striker? I mean, Neil Collins certainly said so 
uh, in the uh, in the post match interview when I was sat there. I mean, Devante Cole should have scored from from close range again across from the right hand side. Again, I stood, came out to try and meet it, was completely missed it unfortunately, and um, Cole hooked over from close range, but that was under good pressure from um, from Terrell Thomas. They hit the bar, didn't they, uh, as well through Earl. So they, they probably, for, for their one goal in the first half, they probably had three or four good chances. Whereas we had, for our, for our two goals in the first half, probably only had one or two good chances. And, and Alfie made the, the, the best of them. So, the, yeah, the, the, there was still an element of riding our luck in that first period. But like I say, when, when, when you've got your striker, like Alfie, taking those chances, I mean, the second chance, the, the second goal was just excellent. Just a love of strikers finish like that, Nath. And, and like I say, when you've got Devante Cole, who Tracy on, on Thursday show warned us, isn't really firing on all cylinders at the moment. I don't know if you guys... Could hear from the from from the covered end, but he got he got jeered off when uh when, when he got subbed off. There was sort of a sarcastic cheering from the away fans. So you can see. Imagine if we were doing that to Alfie. I wouldn't I wouldn't feel too pleased with that with a man who's got you know double figures for goals and has had a, a good season. But it just shows the difference that that he made. And it did get more stretched in the second half, as you say, Napa. And we looked we looked to fret, you know, on the counter. Maybe again, maybe could have had a, a bit better sort of decision making at times. But we easily could have. Could have extended our lead. I mean, it's so unlucky, Alfie, not to get the hat trick with that curler that came came back off the crossbar. Yeah, exactly. It was, um, you know, I think everyone was willing it in. I think because I think I don't think he's ever scored a hat trick, has he? In his career, I don't know. But um, he, had, uh, he absolutely he has. has. He scored four. He scored four in one game for Cheltenham away at Wickham. But he's, he's oh, scored right. a hat trick for us, so he's, he wants to score a hat trick for us. He mentioned it to Rich a couple of weeks ago. That's his target between the oh. end of the season. Oh right, you know it's only because someone was downstairs at half time, so and they they had a tenner on him to score a hat trick today at sixty six to one. But um, and they said they didn't have to score a hat trick, which I was like, he must have done. But uh, but yeah, no, everyone was willing that in when he hit the post, and yeah, obviously when the penalty was <laughs> was given, um, he probably wished he was on there. I'm, some people were saying Campbell should have asked to take the penalty, but I don't think he probably would have asked Chucks uh, and get a glare from that big old beast. But. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. They're like you say, it's the massive, massive, massive win, and there was a little bit of a, I don't know, there's a little bit of fire in Alfie on yesterday. It was definitely for me his best game, um, but I think it's just those fine margins. Yeah, Devante Cole's out of form. I think he should have scored a. I think it was him that had a header that he headed straight over, which it was free header. He should have scored there. But um, yeah, where well, Alfie's on his day, and you know that Benji's already said to him, like, where where would we be without him? How you can have, imagine being the top goal scorer in the Premier League, and then. F- finishing 14th or something it's, you'd be mad wouldn't it but it's yeah. it just shows that how inconsistent how poor defensive we have been this season um but yeah you've got one one striker banging for him and Alfie um obviously chasing down that'd be finished top goal scorer and you know the thing is with Devante Carno nice cliche but he's getting in the right positions and I don't really care about Barnsley but yeah it's not nice to see him getting jeered when he's just a top goal scorer but not my problem <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I did think that was harsh, but yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't a Barnsley pod, so let's not slag off their fans too much. I mean, we can do if you want to, Ben. If you got anything to say, no, no. Let's uh, let's get back to Cholton. Um, uh, yeah, TC. I thought it's weird. So TC's had a like other than the first third of the season, he's had a really disappointing campaign, and and that's why he's not been featuring. But he's come off the bench maybe twice under Nathan Jones, and actually looked really like he was he was running around and really putting the hard yards in. Uh, so I was glad. I was glad to see he won the penalty. I mean, a lot of a lot of chat asking why 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 did Chucks take the penalty? I mean, you can see why. Um, uh, Nick says uh, poor Chucks can't get a goal. He looked distraught. It was an awesome save. Um, Jeremy said he thought it was a poorly taken penalty by by Chucks. Um, Stuart says why did Nik take the penalty? He has a history of snatching the ball for pens and missing. His effort yesterday was poor. I mean, what did you um, what did you think? John said he didn't think it was a great pen either. Uh, but it was a decent save. What, what, what did you think of, of, of Chooks taking the penalty yesterday, Ben? I think he should be taking it because he's our main striker, if you like, when when Alfie's not there. Um, it's just a shame Alfie wasn't on the pitch. But, yeah, he was messing around with the ball, wasn't he? He, kept, he must have moved it around on the spot two or three times. I know it was windy, but he just kept, like... He put his head down and then he walked away and then he went back to where I thought, oh, no, don't keep doing that. And, uh, yeah, you could see how distraught he was when he missed that as well. <laughs> he took him, like, back and was like, come on, you got to come over and take this short corner with me. And he was, like, slowly walking over there thinking, oh, God. But um, to be fair, it ended really well, didn't he? And he kept the ball in the corner for a while. And, um, 
yeah, he was just he was just gutted for him. And I'm I'm gutted for him because you think how many times have we said this season where he's come on and made such an impact and been the reason why we scored goals. And yeah, as Nay said, you just willing him to score that score that yesterday, to like sign off the day and go, yep, three one, we deserved that. Alfie's hit the bar and obviously Chuck's had that chance, didn't he, from when he hit the bar and you think he's just going to head it in and edit that over. So a frustrating one for him yesterday because he does only have a small period of time when he comes on to make that impact and to get on the score sheet. Had the perfect opportunity to get on the score sheet, but it was a decent save, to be fair, by the keeper. It was in the corner and he has tipped it round. Um, but yeah, he should be scoring them, shouldn't you? But um, yeah, let's not take away from it. He played well when he came on, held the ball up. And um, yeah, Campbell, I think it's been one of the most disappointing things for me this season. His, uh, his downfall, really. I mean, he, as you said, I remember that that goal against Reading, that absolute screamer he scored. And you thought, wow, we, he's, he's really going to kick on now for us. And then unfortunately, it's gone the other way for him and he's lost his confidence. A few different managers now under him and um, Jones has been, I'd, I'd say Jones has kind of taken him away from the firing line, been patient with him, brought him on for these cameo spells. And look, I know he was only on with the added time yesterday, probably about 10, 15 minutes. But look, what an impact he made. He, he looked really lively, looked like he really wanted the ball and obviously that dodgy back pass <laughs> to the keeper and he was bang on it. And wins a penalty. Uh, that's why I couldn't work out why John Stead was sent off because it was one of the most blatant penalties. But um, no doubt you'll tell me the reason for that, or unless you don't know. No, uh, don't but yeah, know. no, great to see him make an impact. Yeah, Neil Collins was asked why John Stead was sent off afterwards. I can't, I was, I was, can't remember what he said. He didn't. He didn't give away much. If I remember, it was a nice, nice little walk down memory lane to see John Stead coming out of the uh, the dugout there and said, "Oh, it's John Stead." <laughs> I forgot. Forgot he's uh, he's at Barnsley now. So he scored. He scored a couple of goals against us back in the Premier League days. Uh, didn't they? Yeah, so right, 50 points now, now 10 points above the relegation zone. We're done and dusted. You know, I've, I've been saying for a couple of weeks, I didn't think we needed any more points really anyway, but we've got those in, in just in case anyone was worried. Um, so so we can relax now. Yeah, excellent. Um, I mean, I did put in the chat, what, what would people like to see uh, for, for the rest of the season? I mean, there's uh, Someone said, that, yeah, David said, I'd like to see Jones play the strongest team available, get some more good performances in and points on the board before the season ends. No messing about bringing youth players in to try them out. Whereas, obviously, I imagine some people will have the opposite view to that as well, Nave. So what's the target now? Uh, for me, well, I would um, focus on next season. So I think Nathan would have an idea in his mind who he's going to want to keep and who or what, who's, who's going to uh, go. Um, and I'd focus on that. I'd focus on trying um, if he's going to stick with, is he going to stick with three at the back next season? You know, is he going to carry on with that? Is he going to um, bring more sort of youth players through, uh, give them a go? It just needs to, I think for me, just give pl pl players a chance to say, yeah, I, I want a contract or not. And then it's down to them. Um, probably won't be very popular with people this, but I wouldn't play Dobbo now. I think if if that's if he's definitely going, I just don't see any benefit of it. We don't if we don't need the points. I think we need to focus on next year and focus on players and next year. That's nothing bad against Dobbo. I'd bring him in for the Shrewsbury game, let him captain the game, take him off the 85th minute, let him get a stand on ovation, which he deserves. Um, if he goes in the summer, but I think we just need to start planning for next season now. Whether or not he does that, I don't know, but that's what I would be doing. Yeah, Dean says uh, Dobson gave a wave to the covered end yesterday uh, when he went off as if it was a a, a goodbye. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't like to think about life without George Dobson because he's he's obviously been one one of the only sort of positives of the side for for a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, but the, you know that that could that probably is the reality that's that's coming, and, and and we will move on. And that's that's how these things work. But yeah, hopefully, whenever it is at the end of the season, he'll get a proper uh, ovation. Right, let's hear what Nathan Jones. Uh, made of uh, yesterday's game. Also hear what he makes of uh, Lloyd Jones going on Love Undercover. We'll hear that at the end of this interview. Attaining game and a, a big three points against the side chasing for the playoffs. Absolutely. Massive three points for us. Uh, real good performance against the side that's that's a very, very good side at this level. Um, they're in the playoff side. They score goals freely. They're one of the best away records. So for us to... To, to win the game, we're, we're delighted. Yes, yeah, their first away defeat since uh, since November. And on, on the balance of play, do you think it was a fair result? Absolutely, I did. I thought we had more opportunities. They'll question the offside for the goal, but we should have had a penalty first half. You know, pushing the back, we've missed a penalty. 
So all these things even themselves out, you know, in, in, in terms of stuff. We've played extra, gone down at a one on one, should have won, should it's a lot of shudders in, in, in football, but it's what you do within the the hundred minutes these days that, that count and like, up against the top side, give them full respect. We try to go after them, try to press them. They had real good football inside, well drilled, well coached. But I thought we were you know, we, we we probably edged a really good game. It won't be the first time we've said it this season, but what a difference Alfie Mays made with those chances that he's taken today? Well, everyone, you know, we were much more, we were much better at it, much more aggressive, so front-footed. You know, Roy Hansen come back in, did well, thought the midfield were really, really good against, uh, you know, probably a midfield four against them, so they were overloaded, we did that well. Um, Alfie took his chances really, really well on the counter, we were a constant threat and could have had more, you know, bit met better, um, uh, a, a sort of, an end product, we, we could have had more. And then obviously we missed a pen in, in injury time, which would have given us a 3-1 win. So, um, look, really pleasing. A lot of stuff we can do better, but really pleased with everyone today. Yeah, I mean, they, they had some chances in the first half, but that sort of dried up in the second. What, what did you ask your defence and midfield to change? No, I just want us to be, you know, just make sure that we we deny certain stuff. You know, they, they, they there's nothing clear cut they had, I think. I think they had, um, there was few things that, that that they had first off we had chances we should have had a penalty first off they give a free kick instead of instead of a, instead of a penalty when we believe it was you know tight call they believe it's a tight call the, the offside so so all these things happen in football but we're not concerned about that we're concerned about what we do uh, we were much more front-footed today than we were against Stevenage we were much more uh, Charlton athletic than the, than what we were against Stevenage and that's what we that's what we worried about and 11 unbeaten now it's so important to, to build up this momentum going into the summer well, first and foremost, it was important to get as many points as we possibly can because when I first came in, we were in a precarious position. We're in a less precarious position now. Um, so that's the first goal. And then it's about laying foundations so that we can continue <coughs> to move the football club forward. 50 points now, do you think that's, that's that done now? No, I, I never take anything for granted. But we're not, we're not looking at that. You know, we, we don't, what we want to do is keep moving forward because if we keep aiming there and we just fall short of there, then we haven't got to worry about that. Let's see Kane, Kane Ramsey come back into the side today after a couple of months out. What did you make of him today? Um, I thought he was excellent. I thought to come back in after nearly two months out and with the extent of his injury and then he's looking really good in training and then to really push to start, I, I'm really delighted with him. And he's, it, there'll be more to come. We've, I've literally probably worked with him for 13 days. Um, so there's a lot more to come from him. But he has the profile we like and uh, let's see. Do you think he was hard done with a penalty? Look, he was quite close to him, but I guess his arm might have been out. What they'll do is now they'll they look at his arm was out, so that that's what they do. So look, we've we've questioned other decisions, so it's not question that it it happened. We recovered from that, and these are very good at coming from behind. So you know they're probably one of the best sides in the league at coming from behind. So for us to to go away from him and and look, we should have won the game. You know, by, by, by three one, we got a penalty. We. You know, we, we, we say I don't miss penalties against my teams, so I, I, I don't like it when we do it. And uh, and, and anyway, I'm just I'm just really happy with the, with, the, with the three points. Obviously, uh, Tanay didn't didn't make it today. Was that just carrying on from when he had to come off on Monday? Well, he, he keeps coming off, so he keeps playing through fatigue and through things. So you know, sooner or later, we got to go. But at the minute, we haven't had that other right wing back to be able to to be able to do that with Kane. We can take him out and, and try to get him back to full fitness so that he can last ninety minutes. He's given us everything, fair play, but can't keep bringing him off all, all the time and, and, and not get into the bottom of, of his fatigue. So we've had to take him out of everything, give him a few days off, and then hopefully he'll be fresher on Monday. So are you enjoying the, the Valley atmosphere at the end there and a chance to do it again on Tuesday against Wigan? Well, I, I, as I said, the fans responded, I think, to, to a real good front-footed performance and then the players responded to the, to the, to the fans. They, they play such a big part, you know, in this place when it's rocking is a great atmosphere and we would like even more in here. We'd like to eventually fill it again you know like it used to be so that's what we're we keep working at that's what we keep wanting to do but you know there's a correlation between good performances and 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 fan interaction and 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 i said i thought they were brilliant today and it was it was wonderful and i said it should have been slightly more comfortable but never mind sort of um test you expect against wigan their form's been a bit patchy recently but they're saying that they can be a good side this season ah, look, it's english football you you could the premier league you know what you're going to get from top teams now you go to the championship anyone can win a game League One is exactly the same. Anyone can win a game. So you, if you go in thinking, well, they're not as good as Barnsley because they're not as high in the league, then you're going to get bitten on the uh, on the proverbial. So what you have to do is you have to be bang at it again and, and prepare 
every game on its merit and try to be the best version of us. And if we're the best version of us, that's all I can ask for. Stevenage, the other day, I was, I was angry after the game and when I watched the game back especially, because we weren't us. So we allowed the team to take the initiative against us in our backyard and that's not something that I like. Just finally, it's a bit of a weird one, but it's something that came up on social media last night that a lot of the fans are talking about, that Lloyd's, I know is filmed in the summer, he's going to be on, on TV. Are you, are you going to be watching that? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> is that the sort of thing you like to see your players do, or is it you don't really mind when they're in their free time? That happened before I got to the football club, so no problem. And right now I'm watching that many League One games, I don't get to watch anything. I've missed Coronation Street, I've missed all those things now, because all I'm concerned is now from, from now until Tuesday is Wigan, so... And, and unless someone appears on a, on, a, on a Wigan game, I won't be watching it. Thinking about a new kitchen or bathroom? Find professional, independent local installers with free home surveys, itemised quotes and protected payments, trading standards approved contracts and workmanship warranties. The British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom, Bathroom Installations accredits installers to ensure they are police checked, fully insured and experienced. Take the risk out of home improvement. Visit bikbbi.org.uk. Hello, fellow addicts. I'm so excited to tell you all about our micropub, The River Owl House. The River Owl House is based in East Greenwich. It has six Pub of the Year awards, an ever changing selection of amazing beer. It's owned by Chomp fans, walkable to the ground in just 20 minutes with buses that go direct to the Valley, too. If your match day routine includes a drink with your friends, you must join your fellow addicts in the river. See you soon. Right, welcome back to Charlton Live on your Sunday morning. Hope you're enjoying the show. Just before the breaks, there we we heard from the Addicts boss, uh, Nathan Jones, after after yesterday's uh, two one win uh, over Barnes. It's not it's nice we've got to a stage now where we can ask a little fun questions, Nathan. If, if we'd lost yesterday and we were three points adrift in the relegation zone, I don't think I'd be asking about Love Undercover. But um, your views on it. So to to try and give you what I understand is of the show. So Lloyd's on there. There's a couple of like like Jamie O'Hara's on there. Um, Ryan Babbles on there, like a couple of former Premier League stars, there's a couple of other footballers as well. They 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 go to the states. It was filmed. It was filmed in in the summer. So Michael's asked if this why Jones isn't playing. No, Jones has been coming back from that injury where he had that injection. This was all filmed in the summer, um, so it wasn't on club time. Um, but yeah, so they they go out to the states. It's like a reality dating show. They they get in a load of women. And uh, they have to, you know, everyone has to not know who Lloyd Jones is for this to work. So realistically, they could have probably done that in anywhere outside of Charlton, really. But um, yeah, and so then they date these women, and then reveal they get them back to England and reveal, oh, I'm actually a really famous Charlton player, Lloyd Jones. Chal- Charlton it was Charlton, she says. But um, yeah, so Lloyd's going to be on the telly, Nathan. Um, are you looking forward to that? It's going to be on. It's going to be on something called Peacock, which is a streaming service apparently that I've never heard of. Um, next month, you're gonna you're gonna be settling in for a bit of that. Uh, I probably won't watch the whole thing. I'll probably just want to watch the reveal of when when he, when they go back to England and he goes, oh yeah, I played Charlton, and just see the the, the, the disappointment in the poor lady's face. Um, <laughs> considering Jamie Jamie R R played for England and and the you know in the Premier League, Ryan Babble played for his country and in the Premier League for one of the biggest clubs in the world, and then you've got Lloyd Jones who plays centre half for Charlton. So uh, yeah, brilliant. But then like, listen, if 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 uh, Floyd struggling to um, in the the old courting game in the in the UK. I feel for him. I'm sure Bumble and all that sort of stuff would suffice. But if you want to go on telly and uh, yeah, that's down to you. I won't be watching it to be fair. Um, but it's nice to know that Nathan watches Coronation Street anyway. But um, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's as long as it doesn't affect his performances. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's so what, why. What that sort of performances sort of... are we talking about here? <laughs> well, you know, like I was just thinking, maybe he was trying to impress the UK people. And after the sort of Blackpool game where he gave the ball away, maybe it was a bit like, oh, you know, thankfully I'm just going to the States to to find a woman. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the point where they bring them back and then it's revealed that, I you know, Cholton versus Burton at home or something. It'd be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I wonder if he can keep a clean sheet in that show. But um. Uh, <laughs> uh, all hell let loose says uh, perhaps we should offer discounted tickets for suitable girlfriends for Lloyd might attract an extra two thousand supporters to home games. I mean, yeah, he's, he's not a good look. He's a he's a good looking lad, isn't he? He's not going to be having any, any problems unless it is the fact that he's he's a he's an internationally famous footballer that's holding him back. But I don't think that's how it works. Uh, personally, Paul says that Lloyd's an international soccer star. Apparently, who knew? Um, Dean says uh, Nathan uh, 
wasn't in Mexico. He was filming for next year's uh, top football pundit. Oh, is that what you're going to be on now? If, yeah, I, I, I did wonder where you'd actually been. Uh, Paul says maybe uh, maybe Lloyd's been showing his stamina perhaps on this show. Well, there you go. That that'll be a bit of fun to look forward to in the in the, in the, in, the, in in. I think yeah, it's next month. I think I read it's gonna it's gonna be streaming. So yeah, certainly something to look forward to. I hope I'm, I'm sure Lloyd had good fun filming it. Uh, I'm not I'm not mad, I'm not against that sort of thing outside of club time. You know, have a bit of fun. Why not? You might as well, uh, especially if it's a chance to to get yourself on 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 TV. Right. Um. Let's uh, hear our second interview. Uh, of the show. Um, I caught up with Karoy Anderson uh, yesterday. Again, I think it's the first time I spoke to him. Uh, he came into the press room. He's, he's obviously had a, a, a game off, didn't he? He was rested for the game against Stevenage on Easter Monday, but came back into the uh, starting 11 yesterday uh, and then came to speak to me uh, after the game. And again, Barnsley today, what did you make of the game? Um, I think we we maintained high levels in our in our press, in our passing, high energy, and I think not only did that um, encourage the team, but I also got the fans behind us a lot. And I feel like, yeah, it was a great win and we deserved it. Definitely deserved it. Yeah, I mean, what does a result like this sort of tell you about the, the turnaround that, that Nathan's brought into the into the club since he's arrived? I feel like um, the feeling around the dressing room is that we can beat anyone as long as we're on it and as long as we stick to the game plan, the tactics that he's put out and trust it, I feel like we can go out and give anyone a really good game and that showed today because you look at Barnsley and they're a good side, they're in playoff positions and, and we've given them a game and we've beaten them and taken three points so I feel like um, he's changed the dynamic around the place and we have a lot of confidence in what we're doing. Yeah, and obviously there's a good run of momentum now, 11 games unbeaten. Uh, how much is that sort of important between now and the end of the season to end well? Yeah, it's very important because we had quite a slow start, but now um, we have that feeling that we don't, we shouldn't be losing, we shouldn't be losing games and we should always get a result out of the game. So to go 11 unbeaten and get a win today is just really encouraging. How much have you enjoyed the, the trust in you that, that Nathan showed since he's, he's come and he's, he's played you pretty much every game? No, it's, it's unbelievable. Like as a young player, it's what you want. Um, when you have Nathan Jones and and the staff behind him, always encouraging me and um, and and pushing me to to be better and work harder every day in training and every games, not to just um, take the last game and be happy with it, but to always want to improve on it. It's really encouraging. I really um, I'm really enjoying it at the moment. Has, has this season almost gone beyond your expectations in terms of the amount of, of time you've played? Obviously, I think Dean brought you in at the start of the campaign and, and you've played a lot of games this year. Yeah, definitely. When I was looking um, at him pre I was just thinking I can do my, I try and do my best and impress people. And then to, to have played as many games as I have, as, as I have so far, um, it's nothing that I expected, but... Um, I just take it in my stride and try and um, improve every every day and every game. And how much of a difference is it coming in and playing senior men's football week to week? How much does that help you sort of improve your game? Yeah, this is the best place for me to improve playing matches, getting some experience, understanding how the game works. It's, it's the best way to improve. So to be in this environment every week is, is really good for me. Obviously, you've had to learn different things. I mean, did, did you end the game at right wing back today? Have you played there much before? Or? No, I haven't played there much before, but... Um, it's it's a thing that I need to do for the team, so I'll do it and I'll do my best. Um, wherever the gaffer puts me, I'll I'll do a job for him. So it's nothing I, I've it's, I haven't played there before, but for the team, I'll, I'll do it. When you're doing something like that, do like the more senior pros, obviously like Michael, sort of guide you where to be and and, and when to be there. Yeah, Hex and, and Reg was speaking to me a lot and made it made it a lot easier. Like when to go and press and when to stay in and keep the shape it was really. It wasn't too difficult to just slot in there. So yeah, they've helped me. Um, they helped me today. I spoke to Michael a couple of weeks ago, obviously about your time out in in America with, with Jamaica. I mean, how how much of an experience was that for you? Yeah, it was an unbelievable experience to play international, especially at my age and be around the players that I've been around. Um, it's really it's really good for my improvement. Um, and it's just a great experience. It's a proud moment uh, for me and my family. So, yeah, those are moments that, that I always look forward to. Is it quite a change to step away from the Charlton environment and go into, into international football? And what, what can you learn out there that you could bring back to Charlton? Um, it's a thing of, it's a different philosophy. And as, as I go through my career, I have different managers. And it'll, it's, a, it's good for me to, to understand that I need to change the way I play certain certain types for certain managers and to slot into certain teams. So I feel like it's still men's football and it still requires the same things, but it just allows me to adapt a bit better. Finally, obviously, it's, it's not been a great season for the club. It's been a good season for yourself. But looking ahead to next year, you sort of take your experience from this year and actually try and 
progress as a club next season and look for promotion. Yeah, definitely. The way where we've gone about the last couple of games and um, the feeling around the place is really is really good. And I feel as if if we take that into next season, then we'll be a really difficult team to beat, and we'll be a team that's up there um, in and around it. So it's very positive right now. There we go. That's Karoy Anderson speaking to myself after after yesterday's game. I mean, just on, on what he said there, uh, Ben, right at the end, where he's talking about the, the the feel around the place. It's interesting that how you, you can almost feel it coming through him. He's talking about how important ending strongly is to take that momentum into next season. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all what we want now from these last few games, don't we? Something to give us some encouragement going into next season. The only thing is, we don't know Nathan's plans with these players. I mean, as we've spoken about a lot and we get in the comments, we need an upheaval because it's not been good enough this season. So, I mean, it, it does seem quite obvious, with the, the, especially in his position, the amount of players that aren't been in the team at all. Um, that looks like they definitely won't be here next season. He's someone that definitely will be. Uh, He was talking about the encouragement he was getting from Heck and Reg yesterday, which is good because I think Reg is obviously definitely going to be one who will be here next season as he was signed only in January. Um, So, yeah, that's what we want. We want this a spine through the team to build around that, have a good harmony going through it. Um, and yeah, hopefully they can all rib Lloyd Jones for his appearance on there on, on Love Undercover. Because we want their banter in the change room. I mean, we've lacked characters in this team, haven't we? We've lacked leaders. We've lacked that kind of team morale where you kind of feel like we're all together in this. Because, But they've all chopped and changed, haven't we? We've had such a churn around the players. And if you think of Kar- Karoy, I know he got taken off against... Exeter after 45 minutes and a few fans were going, ah, oh, Blemenek, he's not looking as good anymore. But he's had a whirlwind few months. I mean, to to come into the team after being nowhere near for ages, new manager put in confidence in you, and then you've got this opportunity to play for your country. And as he said, he's playing for against uh, players that are in the Premier League or around Europe against the America um, getting this new coach in, I mean, fair play to him. He's taken it in stride, and I thought he had a, a much better game yesterday. Excellent stuff. Right. Um, yeah, Andrew says uh, Nathan's kept the faith with Karoy, and we are reaping uh, the rewards. Right. We've got a special guest uh, for you guys uh, this week. Uh, delighted to say uh, that Ali Maxwell from the Not the Top 20 pod uh, joins us. He was at the Valley yesterday working for Charlton TV, an absolute EFL expert. Ali, um, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Morning, guys. How are we doing? I, I don't do many recordings on a Sunday morning, so I might be a bit calmer and a bit quieter than usual, but it's good uh, to be here. No, so normally on a Sunday morning, we're really angry, so it's probably probably not really good <laughs> for, for the day of rest, of course. But I mean, you, you, just on, on yesterday's game first, it's always interesting to get as or, or an outsider's point of view but you were you were there for, for Charlton TV and you've seen a lot of football this season um how, how, how did our performance rank yesterday yeah I was really positive partly because I listened to you a lot on my way in talking about Easter Monday's game against Stevenage and I, I wasn't expecting much after that um but as I was at pains to point out on the broadcast um clearly you are going to focus on your own team your own performances your own individuals but there are two teams in every game and uh, the tactics, the strategy of the opposition are always going to play a big role in, in how a game looks and feels. And I think the last two games that you guys have played have shown that uh, in League One, you've got two extremes, really. Well, I wouldn't say that they are at two extreme ends of the spectrum, but the way that Stevenage play is very extreme. Um, they boil the game down to nothing. They boil it down to set plays, basically. It's like American football. Um, whereas Barnsley... They are very extreme as well, in a different way. Uh, you may have noticed yesterday that they are one of the most attacking teams I think I've ever seen at League One level. You know, they play 3-5-2 like Charlton, but it looks a bit different, doesn't it? Those wing-backs get very high. The centre midfielders are really attacking. The centre-backs join the attack as well when they when they build up and they play quick and direct. And once Charlton were ahead, they just left like two men back. Uh, and Charlton, clearly on the counter-attack, had a lot of chance in the second half. So... Uh, I enjoyed the game. I thought it was entertaining. I was Im- impressed with uh, parts of, of Charlton's display. Boringly, now that the kind of emotion of the, the day has, has uh, receded and looking at it a little bit more objectively, I think you have to recognise that Barnsley had a lot of good opportunities, uh, in particular straight away, ball over the top, McAtee lobbing the keeper, 
uh, hitting the, the roof of the net uh, or, or the top of the net. Uh, Cole put one over from inside the six-yard box. And in the second half, Charlton did pretty well. But, you know, the game was d- decided by Alfie May's finishing versus Barnsley's poor finishing, probably, if, if you're going to be really honest. Morning, Ali. Um, Morning, mate. Focus, f- f- focusing on other teams then. Um well, obviously we're focusing, well, I'm focusing on next year now and hopefully a, a promotion charge. If you look at Portsmouth as, say, the standard or previously promoted teams from the league, Alfie May obviously is the goals. In terms of what aspects of players or or sort of attributes do you think Cholton need to maintain that charge? Because we was sort of backing ourselves selves early doors, weren't we, really? Mm. Yeah, for sure. I think... Um... I brought up Portsmouth twice probably yesterday as obviously the gold standard team to compare uh, yourself to if you're a League One side, uh, any League One side really. But I think specific to Charlton, there are a lot of parallels and a lot of, you know, you can't just copy and paste, but it it is very relevant to look at them and and try and work out how Charlton could look more like Portsmouth this season. That's because, you know, even in terms of the way the season is finishing this year under Nathan, last year, Moussinho came in um, they had had a really poor first half of the season. And they finished the season with an 11-game unbeaten run, of which only four were wins and seven were draws. And I think I got a similar sense from Charlton fans yesterday that they're happy with the unbeaten run, but no one's getting carried away about it, partly because it's been it's been mostly drawn games. But now you look at Portsmouth, and it's impossible with hindsight not to think, well, were they just building habits? Were they building habits of defending their box properly, of making sure that the opposition never scored more than one goal, but ideally none at all. And then maybe in the summer, did they focus a little bit more on the attacking patterns of play, of recruiting for specific players in specific attacking roles who are now starring, players like Abu Kamara this season. And, you know, it looks like it it, it was all pretty straightforward and I'm sure it wasn't that. But I do think there's huge parallels for, for Charlton. And I genuinely don't think you need to reinvent the wheel. I, I really think that Jones... You know, with his experience and with his, he's so he's so clear in what he wants and expects, and he has built teams before. So I don't think you need dozens of new players. I think, and he alluded to in in his post match, alluded to a squad being, I think he said, as big as it can possibly be. That's not ideal. Managers don't want to work with 35, 40 senior players. So for me, in the summer, it's much more about cutting deadwood, cutting fat. And going into next season with a couple of really targeted additions, and maybe we could go through positions uh, in a bit. But I, I personally don't think you need like complete revolution. I think it's trim, trim, and, and 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 be really focused and try and expand on what's been the case in the last few months, which is not losing games, being okay defensively, hopefully better, and then I think the attacking stuff will come. Morning, Ali. Um, thanks for coming on this morning. Uh, just talking about the squad size there, trim, 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 and talking about um, our youngsters in the side. I know over the last few years you've done a show on Sky 21 Under 21, and I know Miles Lieburn featured on that last season. Obviously, he's injured now. Uh, looking at our side yesterday, we had quite a few Under 21s playing in Small, Anderson, Carnu, and Campbell coming on. How do you rate these youngsters? Um, would they be in your thoughts for next season? Uh, morning, Cloakey. Good to be on with you, mate. Uh, not sure about Twiglets for life as your caption. Um, not a big Twiglets guy myself. Um, but yes, uh, always happy to talk about exciting young players and, and Charlton. You know, uh, you've got to be careful, really, because there's a lot of academies doing doing excellent things. But I think if I look at the last six or seven years, the clubs that stand out in the EFL in terms of um, the quality of, of academy player, but also the uh transferring of, of academy talent into first team contributors you look at probably blackburn and bristol city in the championship uh you look at charlton in league one derby to an extent but that was mainly you know they, they kind of had to uh and then probably crew i guess in in league two as well so yeah i have a, a huge amount of respect for the academy it was cool to be on yesterday and be at the valley for for what was i think called academy day uh and to talk about um you know joe gomez and esri conza but then respecting the fact that even outside of the biggest names uh, that are playing for England now, uh, an academy is, is also about developing professional players, whether they're playing in the National League, to be honest, or in the Premier League. And I think Charlton do that really well. They are littered across the, the top four or five tiers. So a lot of respect for the academy uh, and what Steve Avery does. I think it's cool that Nathan and uh, and uh, Paul Hart were, were you know, a big part of that um, not too long ago as well. So these are the things that 
just as an outsider, just feel right. Uh, and I think, you know, hopefully contribute to you guys feeling a sense of pride uh, in your club outside of just the results of the first team on, on a weekend. Um, I was really excited to see Karoy. It's very, very clear to me that uh, Nathan Jones went in instantly and, and just loved what he saw. And that's cool because as a young player, it's not just about what you can do, but if your manager has a, a, a really clear sense of why your skill set is going to be good for him and therefore invests time, both playing time, but coach, coaching time to make you better. Um, that's what every young player needs. And, and that's clearly what Anderson's getting. So that's really exciting. Um, his He played well yesterday. You know, it's, it's incredible the amount of distance that he can cover. It's really, really helpful to have someone that can press that high up the pitch with the sort of security of, of Dobbo and, um, and commentary behind him. Uh, he obviously won, got on the second ball, didn't he? Won the free kick for, for May's goal. Uh, a couple of other nice nice bits of play. The fact that Jones was happy to put him at right wing back in the second half and he had a couple of strong, strong moments. Just won a lot of tackles, didn't he? Um, he's not the cleanest in terms of his first touch, um, but, you know, he's still relatively he could become more composed on the ball and i expect that he will but still showed a few you know he's certainly not like a complete rabbit in headlights he still so showed some good moments on the ball uh, i was really impressed with small at left wing back um i heard his interview that you guys played and i just really liked the sound of him as a bloke as a character a confident young man but but kind of not arrogant you know humble and confident and and really positive and you know, those are the characters that you want uh, in your team. And then I saw him on the pitch and it, it was exactly the same. You know, he was giving it big guns to the stand after making a tackle out for a corner. Um, obviously, physically very impressive, which you have to be in that role. Uh, his, his crossing wasn't wasn't unbelievable, but but frankly, the right wing back for Barnsley Williams is a very good 1v1 defender at this level. So uh, I was really impressed by him. And I, I don't know what his contract situation is, but it sounded like he was keen to stick around next year. And I think if the club could tie him down for a few years, Left back, left wing back is not a um, a position where there's a lot of talent in in the top four tiers. So if you can get him locked down, I, I really think that would be a good thing to do. Uh, and then Carnu, obviously, you know his role was that the game plan was pretty simple: exploit Barnsley's high line and, and hit the channels as soon as you got it. And uh, it was it made for a frenetic game, didn't it? Particularly to start with, but you have to say it was the you know it was the right strategy. And and Carnu helped a lot, um, constantly running on the outside of the, of the left centre-back and, and getting on the ball in the channels. Again, didn't see a huge amount from him inside the box, did we? And I know that's something that, that he'll probably have to to keep developing, but that's normal for young strikers, I think. So, yeah, I was, I was pleased to see the young players. I'm a massive Lee Byrne fan. I really think this, the sort of player that he is with his size, with his comfort in front of goal, um, yeah, I, I'm just so sad about his injury this season because I think he's one of the most exciting strikers in English football uh, under 21 so hopefully he'll come back and, and be ready next season yeah fingers crossed he will and just finally then so um, as you mentioned earlier and Joseph's put in the chat what what positions do you think uh, are a priority for us to improve upon for next season yeah so I, I mean I sort of think that at centre-back what, what's difficult is uh, from a neutral point of view I find it hard to like always know exactly how like injury prone certain players are and that that has to be quite a big thing because certainly at center back obviously the best thing and, and the most effective thing will be to have a group of four center backs sorry i just got a delivery uh if you hear dogs barking i'd like to apologize for that um but yeah i i see a group involving hector gillespie edmunds green jones you know, I probably only think you you maybe need one more centre back if they were all fit, um, and that could be Thomas, that could be Ness. I, I don't really know, but I don't think that's. I think that's more about Jones's coaching structure than it is the individual players. Personally, that's always how I think about defences in, in the EFL. Uh, I think at wing back you need like I like Small and I like Ramsey. I thought he did well, and it's clearly helpful to have someone with his height and his leap to target for for long goal kicks and stuff to to kind of hopefully win that first contact. And he did that quite well at times. Uh, I think you probably need you need more dependable depth at wing back, ideally, if this is the formation that you're going to play. Um, in midfield, it's just crazy to have so many names that I think of as good players, and half of them have barely taken to the pitch this season. Kamara, Fiorini, Watson. I know they're all on loan, but it's just absurd that they're not. You know, I don't know what's happened with these guys and their availability, but frankly, if everyone was fit, it would be a ridiculously strong group of central midfield players and I would back Jones to end up finding the right combinations to have um and with Dobson's situation with Hungary I mean that is that's obviously an area where you're going to need to work it out um 
And then and then up front, I mean, I, d- I don't understand why Lua Lua came in. It, it seems obvious to me that he's not going to get any minutes if Campbell is ahead of him in the in the pecking order. And I think it's it's fair for, for Tyrese to get those minutes off the bench. Um, again, with like the Dapo's not going to be there, Wickham's not going to be there, Chucks can't play more than 20 minutes. So it, it all hinges on Lieburn. Like a Lieburn May front two sounds absolutely unbelievable with Carnu as an option and then a, a fourth, hopefully more of a physical target man type. Maybe it's Chucks, probably need another one because you can't really rely on him to stay fit. So yeah, all, all areas as ever need looking at and the keeper as well. But I don't think that necessarily means 10 players. I think it could mean six or seven really, really good ones. Um, that that's the, that's the objective for the recruitment team. Excellent. Well, yeah, it'll certainly be a very interesting season, uh, summer for, for the addicts. But yeah, Ali, um, thanks for your insight. That was, that was fascinating. Thanks for coming on and giving us your, your opinion. Uh, I'm sure all of our listeners already or, you know, the, not the top 20 pod, but if you haven't, make sure you, you check it out. Ali, cheers for your time this morning, mate. Thank you, guys. Hope to be back at the Valley again soon. And cheers for having me on. Excellent. There we go. That's Ali Maxwell from the Not The Top 20 pod giving us his insight. Uh, on the Addicts after watching uh, yesterday's game. Absolutely fascinating. Really pleased uh, that Ali was able uh, to join us. So we've just got a bit of time to look ahead to uh, the Wigan game on, on Tuesday then, Nathan. I mean, their, their form, uh, as I mentioned to, um, to to Nathan Jones in the interview, has been a bit patchy. Um, obviously, they've, they're have they sitting above us in, in, in the table, and that's even with their eight-point deduction. They're sitting in 13th. If they didn't have that deduction, they'd be on 60 points. They'd only be 11th. They'd sort of be around sort of Leighton Orient, Northampton, Sort of territory in the uh, in in the table. They drew nil nil with Port Vale uh, yesterday. They've only won one of their last five games. Um, what sort of test are you expecting? I can see it being a dead rubber, to be honest. <laughs> like what I thought it was going to be on on Monday, but I've, I, it was going to be a test because you know they've got some good players. I don't know if Sean Clare's fit and if he's going to be playing on whatnot, but it'd be obviously good to see him. We know where his weaknesses are, so it'll be interesting there. Um, but yeah, I, I think it just depends really on how, how Nathan's going to play, if he's going to plan for next season or if he's literally going to focus on having an unbeaten run like Ali was just saying that Portsmouth had to the tail end of last season. So it should be an interesting game. Hopefully we can have more of the same of yesterday than we did against Stevenage. But um, yeah, I'd like to see us sort of plan for next season now. Yeah, Ben. I mean, so yeah. I mean, in terms of us, then what 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 changes, if any, would you make ahead of to, to uh, uh, what is it Tuesday's game? Um. Well, obviously, Ramsey came off quite early, so didn't he for Reg at uh, that right back position? Um. So I don't know if he'll be fit to start, which is a shame because, um, as we said yesterday, I thought he was quite good, and we we've not really seen him, have we, yet so much? Um. Yeah, I mean, as Ali just pointed out there, is someone like Lua Lua came at, come into the squad and he's not been given any minutes at all. Nate thinking it'll be a, da- a dead rubber. I mean, I just hope that we have like the same front-footed aggressionness in our aggressionness. That's not a word. Aggressiveness nature in our team to really go at them because look, both teams aren't going for anything. For some bizarre reason, Wigan thought it wasn't a good idea to play on the international week when. We were just ready to play. So I just hope it can be another exciting game. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know the fitness of the squad, who can stay in. I mean, I, I'd probably stick with the same squad again, if possible. Um, I, as Naif said, you just don't know about Dobbo's situation now. I know um, Dean said he was waving to the covered end at the end. Who do you bring in then? Because these centre midfielders, it doesn't seem like he wants to give any of these fringe players a go. Maybe Backinson coming into the squad. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd personally stick with the same same squad, to be honest with you, because, um, yeah, these are the kind of players that are fighting for next season to, to be there. I can't really see many other players coming in to kind of mix it up and change it. Um, and, yeah, give them the rewards for having a good game yesterday. Excellent stuff. Right, we've run out of time uh, on this week's chat Live. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed the show. If you can see in the live chat, and I've also put it on, on Twitter this morning, I've, I've linked our um, Upbeats Walk fundraising page. We've got a, a couple of donations in there already from Win Grant and, and Chris Collingwood, and my wife has donated as well. So if you guys want to uh, support our page for the, the walk, obviously a, a very good uh, cause there for, for the Upbeats, uh, feel free. Uh, to do so. Massive thanks to everyone who has tuned in uh, today in, in the live chat on YouTube. Hope you've really enjoyed uh, the show and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel or subscribe uh, on your podcast app as well those of you who've caught up 
uh, on the pod. Thanks for, for listening to us. Massive thanks to Ali Maxwell from Not The Top 20 who joined us uh, a few moments ago. Really fascinating insight uh, into how he sees uh, the addicts at the moment. Big thanks to Nathan and to Ben. Good to speak to you guys as always. Cheers, gents. Cheers, guys. So we'll be back on Thursday where we'll look back at that game against Wigan and then ahead to Saturday's trip uh, to Cambridge. But for now, thanks for listening to Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. My name is Louis Mendes. We'll see you again on Thursday. (laughs) 